You're listening to the Strong and Capable podcast with your host, Bridget Heller. Hey, 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 welcome to this episode of the Strong and Capable podcast. I'm your host, Bridget Heller, and I have on today a conversation that I am really, really thrilled. I have Miss Darcy Wilde. She's with Shines Cosmetics, and I'm going to have her tell you more about her story, but I'm so excited because in this season, we're talking about break the mold and how do you do that? How do you be a positive impact on the world while doing something different? Well, that's how you do it. You do something different. But what does that look like? What is that process like? And what are the results when you have the courage to do it? So thank you. Thank you, Darcy, for coming on and having this conversation with me. Would you please introduce yourself? To the audience so that they know who you are and how fabulous you are and the things that you're doing. Yes, I am so excited to be here as well. My name is Darcy Wild. Like you mentioned, I am the CEO and one of the owners of Shine Cosmetics. We are a makeup company focused on helping women feel beautiful. Um, I'm also a mom of three and I have three grandchildren. And so two of those are daughters and I am very passionate about helping women being their true leader, their champion, um, and following their dreams. And that aligns with the mission we have here at Shine Cosmetics. So I'm excited to chat. Me too. Me too. I was thinking about you, Darcy, earlier because, A, there's no one would guess you're a grandma. I'm sure you get that all the time. Right? I do. And it also doesn't help that I'm five feet tall. Like, it just, my height has never worked out as a benefit for me except that I could date all the tall guys or, or, or the other short guys and they still were taller than me. But other than that, like, no, no one, no one ever believes that I'm a grandma, which I'm going to appreciate that. At yep. this life. <laughs> as long as you can. I always, I have a daughter who's married and in college. And anytime I say it, they're like, wait, what? Yeah. Yeah. But then like my grandkids and they're like, you have more than one. I'm like, yeah, I'm not a boutique grandma anymore. Like I am legit living in my Mimi life right now. <laughs> <laughs> it's amazing. You look amazing. Oh, thank you. <laughs> and I was thinking about you specifically because, you know, before anyone's on the podcast, they fill out this sheet for me, kind of talking about who they are, what, what's going on, how we're going to break the mold. And you were talking about how you were a mother and then you felt that call to something different, something more. You went into a corporate job and you didn't just do good. You killed it. You rocked it. I'm going to own that and agree with you. Yes. yes, you totally rocked it. And I was thinking about how common this is. As moms, we get lost in our mom world and we think we have nothing to offer. But when you're a mom, you are building so much emotional resilience, so much strain. You learn to navigate and negotiate so many hard things. Because I was like you, that when I went back into the corporate world, I was like, you're angry about this one policy? Oh, come on. Yeah. I cleaned up, but you don't even know what I cleaned up this morning. Come on. You can exactly. you need to negotiate that. Did you find that the same? What was your journey going from motherhood to corporate world? What did you find easy and hard about it? So for me personally, like I think I've been thinking about break the mold, right? Ever since you reached out to me. And I feel like there's, I have two facets of my life where I broke the mold. And one was simply the mold of what I thought I wanted for my life. Like, when I was young, my mom worked. She's one of the hardest workers I've ever known. And I spent a lot of time at a babysitter, which my mom was doing the best she can. And there were so many benefits that came to me from the different houses, the different moms that helped my mom raise me, right? But as a young you know, teenager and even early into my early 20s, and as I became a mom, I was like, I'm going to be a stay-at-home mom. I'm going to be the mom that has a chocolate chip cookies waiting on the counter when they get from school. And I was deep into that. My oldest was just an early teenager. And I was like, I need to do something for myself. Like this is, this is actually not what I want. <laughs> I not, and I'm not saying that against anyone because I think it is a noble thing to be able to stay at home with your kids and put all your effort there. But I found I, one, I was volunteering myself to death. So I basically was working for free for everyone, which is not a bad thing either. But I was like, I'm already pouring all this time in. Like, I need something for myself. And so that was when I broke the mold of what like I saw for myself. And I decided to go out. And it was so scary. I hadn't finished my college degree. I'd been a stay-at-home mom for years. 
And I decided to put my name in out there to um, get back in the work world. And I applied for a job at a software company as the social media manager. I totally had imposter syndrome. Like, what's the, what am I doing? And I got in there. I made some, I made some quick, I got some quick wins under my belt. And then I started, you know, like anything in life, when you like can see that you've made progress, it gives you the confidence to take the next step. And I did that. And in the seven years I worked for the software company, I rose to be the first female ever um, promoted to an executive position. I ended up the VP of marketing. And it's really sad to say it's a 20 year old software company. And I was the first woman to ever be promoted. And still this day, I was the first woman to like, they still don't have another woman on in their executive leadership. And so that process was like continually breaking the mold, right? Like being able to sit at the table with men and feel like you belonged there. And, um, but then also just, I, I said, I think I said it in my sheet that I filled out to imposter syndrome daily, like, okay, what do I know? And that's the reality of like, nobody knows what they're doing. So go out and give it your best shot because the chances are you're going to, you're going to win, right? Because you have the right focus. So that was kind of like my personal journey to breaking the mold in my own life. And it was through my experience there that my friend Chandler, who is our founder of Shine, called, called me, asked me to go to lunch because she had seen what I had done in the corporate world and said, hey, I've got this idea. I want to make a difference and I want you to be a part of it. So yeah, that's kind of my, my personal journey. <laughs> so let's talk before we move on to the shine journey, because I agree with you. There's these two separate pieces here. There's like break the mold of the world and break the mold of yourself. I want to okay. talk a little bit more about that because I think I love that you brought that up. I love that you brought up there's these two areas. And I think that's the same for most of us. We have to break our own ideas and our own, or we have to get comfortable with them or we have to do like you said, there nobody really knows what they're doing. Yep. So, you know, a lot of people say fail forward. I don't know if that's the right phrase for whoever's listening, but you just got to be okay with it. Yes. I'm not yes. very elegant point right now. <laughs> yes. No, I, I 100% agree. I got the opportunity to be in a, a conference with Ed Catmull. He's the head of Pixar. And he talked over and over and over about during that conference, how you have to, you have to give yourself permission to fail. Mm -hmm. And I think I put it in my, one of my favorite quotes lately is like, you have to have a version 1.0 to get to a version 2.0. Like it, you only get better when you actually try. Right. And I think also for myself, I had to a lot, give myself permission to step back from what I thought to like decide, is that really is that really giving my best version up to the world? But my whole belief growing up was that the way that I could be the best Darcy is to be the best mom and homemaker. And then I'm in it and I'm like, I'm just not very fulfilled. Like I, I lost myself. If you asked me in my early 40s what my favorite color was, I was like, I don't know what's your favorite color. Because <laughs> because you be, like I had become this like just wanting to serve everybody else's needs and not thinking about my own. And so I had to step back and kind of break my train of thought and be like, is this really, am I really doing my best right now? And for me, that answer was no. You'll be, you'll be better for your family. You'll be better for your friends. You'll be better for your community if you lean into your strengths and go do something for yourself too. And that with my mindset was actually a really scary thought, right? I can remember riding the elevator up on my first day of work. And I was just like, what am I doing? Like, what am I doing? This is like, one, not at all where I saw my life going. And two, also, I don't know what I'm doing, right? But I'm proud of that girl. I'm proud of that girl that got on the elevator and rode it up to the second floor, stepped off and stepped into the scary unknown, I could fall flat on my face, but I was determined to fly. And that made all the difference for my life. The cool part about this, the journey you're talking about, the journey you take, is you don't know what you're, we don't know what we're not good at, but we also don't know what we're good at. And oh, true. when you go on the journey, you get to surprise yourself. If you're open to it and if you allow yourself 
this like judgment free zone of I'm learning, I'm becoming, I'm going to yeah. try this and not try and attach an outcome to it. I'm just going to be here in this moment and do it. You're going to surprise yourself. I've told a few people I was on this reality show um, in December and I don't know when it airs, but I was in Miami doing all this filming and all this craziness. And uh, like you, I remember getting on the plane and being like, what are you doing? Who do you think you are right now? Exactly. Who do you think you are? But I decided, no, I'm just going to be here. I'm just going to see who I meet, how it goes. And I think for me, maybe the first time in my life, I fully did that. You know, I say I'm going to do it a lot, but there's a difference yep. in trying to do it and doing it. And you have Rare to do different. a lot of trying before you get to the actually happening. Yes. And even in the moment when it's actually happening, you have to keep trying. Right? <laughs> like even when you're like recognized, like, oh, I'm doing it. I yes. still have to choose to keep doing it. Yes. So, uh, totally. Yeah. So I'm there and I'm doing that. Right. And I'm like, OK, if this is for me, nothing can like come against me. It's going to be fine if this is for me. It's going to look. I'm like in my head trying to do this positive self-talk and whatnot. So I'm trying, trying, trying. And what was cool about it is I, I learned something unexpected. I did not know. I feel silly not knowing, but I didn't know that I was good on camera. I did not know that. But every single part of this whole process, the camera guy in every room stopped me and said, you are good on camera. Keep that going. Is amazing. You are good. It was. It was amazing. And what was cool about it is because I was just open to the journey, when the compliment came, I was able to receive it. Yes. Right? Yes. So when yes. you're not open, people can tell you all day long, you were awesome. You were amazing. But you won't, you won't receive that. Yeah. You take that in. Well, and it's those little wins that then the next time you build that confidence, right? Like you remember the camera guy, the first camera guy that said it made it yep. easy for you to go into the second camera guy, right? And then he says it and it makes you easier to go into the next. So yeah, it's such a lesson for life right there. Yeah. So you have to, you have to try, you have to just be open to what could be. And sometimes, you, you know, you'll trip and embarrass yourself. That'll oh, yeah. happen. Yeah. I've got plenty of those stories too. <laughs> This is a highlight reel, right? This is this is a not talk. There's not university. They really exist. We don't need to talk about them, but they are very real all the time. Yes, and that's a whole that's a whole journey too. Is that when you do have those failures, teaching yourself not to feel that you're a failure, but just that experiment or whatever you were trying needed some tweaking to be successful, right? Like that's a whole journey in and of itself is trying to learn how to how to like you say fell forward or give yourself permission to fell and be like okay I learned that now how could I make it better yeah you know one of the tools we use in our family is we say what part did I what role did I play in this so when you quote unquote fail is did was it something you did is it something you need to learn is it something that you could do differently or were there other circumstances and in the future can you have a hand in adjusting those circumstances or was it just how it went? And yes. sometimes it is just how it goes. It's nothing to do with you at all. So yeah. identifying where, what role you had or what part you had in this quote unquote failure. And then so that next time you can do it better, different, whatever you decide to do with that, but you can make the intentional choice on what happens next. I love that. I love that. My son is a wrestler and if you know anything about the sport of wrestling, it, it's one-on-one. -on -one. There's nobody to blame. There's like all, it's all you. It's exercise and digging deep every single time you step on the mat. And we have, we say you either win or you learn, right? It's not win or lose. It's win or learn. And, and lots of times, even with the win, there's learning involved, right? But if you can attach that to like all your life, kind of like what you're saying, where, where, where was my part in that process? Mm -hmm. So then I can learn from that. Then it's a win. You, you're always in a win-win. You're never in a lose because you're always looking for how to better the next time you step out there. So, yeah. so that, yeah. that was that was a beautiful segue. So once you've done that and it's she yes. just like, we're here to evolve and learn and it's beautiful and all. <laughs> it's the ones we've found that place. Now, yes. usually we're ready to impact the world for good because we know we can. Yes. We know we can. We have that confidence to do it. So you did that. You and your friends did that. Talk a little bit about Shine, how it came about, and this whole journey. Okay. So like I mentioned, Chandler Taylor, she's our founder, and she was at a dance competition. 
So I've done a lot of a lot of things. Like I mentioned, I volunteered myself to death. I owned a dance studio. And so we had the same love of like our girls dancing. And so anyway, so Chandler was at a dance competition. She's sitting. And I don't know if the listeners out there, if you've had a dancer that competes, it's very often that you're sitting backstage. Your girls are all in a circle. All the moms are putting all the makeup, pulling up the tights, all the things. Well, Chandler's daughter, she was just eight at the time. And she was reading everything. You know how kids are. They're learning to read and they want to read the world. And so as she was getting ready, her daughter had the makeup bag and she was pulling out her products and reading the name of them aloud as Chandler was getting ready. And she pulled out a mascara. It's a great product, but has a name that you definitely don't want your eight-year-old announcing to the world. And so when she started to read it, Chandler just grabbed it right out of her hand and was like, oh my goodness, like dying, right? So embarrassed. And so she hurried, she quickly just finished Maisie's makeup and center backstage. And then she sat there and she's like, what else is in my makeup bag? You know, we buy these products and we're not really intentionally, like we're not paying attention to kind of the messages that we're supporting. And so she started to go through her makeup bag and realize things that she would never even want to say out loud to her girlfriends were sitting right inside of her makeup bag. And she's like, now that I know better, I have to do better, right? Like there's got we've got to do something. And so, like I mentioned, she asked me to go to lunch. She said, I just, I, I want to do something different. What do you think about this? And I'm like, I'm all in. Like I mentioned, my daughters were young teenagers and it was really, um, as a mom of girls, I think one, another way I had to break the mold is the way I've spoke to myself my whole life. And i realizing now, as I see them as a grown woman, I can see where I didn't do the best job. Mm-hmm teaching them how to talk to themselves, but then I can also see where they're better than me. And so it was important. It is important to me, the way that we speak to ourselves. And so we built our brand. We really truthfully just want to help women feel beautiful. We recognize that in the beauty industry, oftentimes you're being marketed either that you've got to cover something up, you got to fix something that's wrong with you or, or sexual, either they're making us sexual objects. And while sexuality is a very important part of who we are as women, and I, I want to always make that clear, like that is part of you. It's not who you are. Like you, you're not a sexual object. And it's crazy to me how men are not marketed to the way that we are allowing the industry to market to us. And so we have the mission to remove sexualization from the beauty industry. And then the second is to uplift and empower women and help them to put their best face forward in the day. And through that journey, I've taught myself, like when I'm getting ready in the morning, I speak to yourself like someone you love, right? I love that by Brene Brown. And there's power in the words, even saying stuff out loud. Like if you want a crazy exercise in how you feel about yourself, go look yourself in the mirror and say the words, I am beautiful. Mm-hmm. That's hard as women, like, right? It's, we're so hard on ourselves. And that's what we are challenging women to do. So all of our products have power. We call them power words. They're all named after, like, when I got ready this morning, I put on my empowered BB cream. I put on my invincible blush, my um, humble eyeshadow palette, all these things to remind myself of who I really am. And I, we, we like to say, we hope that we, you, you use your makeup bag as a little bag of affirmations as you get ready in the morning. So the three of us, Erin is Chandler's sister-in-law. The three of us would meet around the kitchen table late at night. I, like I mentioned, I was still working at the software company and we didn't want our neighbors to know what we were doing because we, if we failed, like you talking about failure, we were like, no one can know, like, this is top secret. Like if we if we don't, if this doesn't work out, we don't want to have to explain ourselves. And so we, I'd go over late at night, we'd sit around the kitchen table and it took us two and a half years, literally around the kitchen table of testing products, refining our brand. What do we really want our mission to be? Who, who do we want people? How do we want people to feel when they interact with our company? Like all these things. And then when I remember we placed our first order and we were like, okay, here we are. We, we've got our order in for all of our products. If this doesn't work out, we're just going to give makeup away for tr- to trick-or-treaters for who knows how long. Like, yeah. 
There's a lot of makeup that we're we're investing in ourselves, right? And so um, what's interesting is that the journey started as a real deep desire to help women feel beautiful. And the journey of personally what that has looked like is beautiful itself. We were talking about this before we started is I've had to like really look at how I speak to myself and build my own confidence around the way that I look and how that changes the way that I feel and the actions that I take. And I sit here and testify that if you'll take the time to speak to yourself the way you would to your daughter, to your mom, to your best friend, there's an internal difference that will happen for you. And you'll build that confidence to then maybe you've got some kind of itch or desire that you want to do or but Building that confidence in yourself is step one because heaven knows there'll be plenty of experiences when you get started that will knock you down to your knees and you got to get back up and be like, nope, this is why I'm doing what I'm doing. Like it really, it really is the very best part of my day. My office here is I can hear when women come into our storefront at our warehouse. And it is just like the joy of my life to listen to women speak about themselves the way that they do when they've interacted with our brand. Like it, literally is the best paycheck that anyone could ever give is to um, see women be feel better because when we feel better, we do better. I fold the laundry with a little more like zeal when I'm like feeling good about myself, right? Yep. If you've taken the time to get out of the sweatpants and get yourself ready, it's really hard because then you want to like go do something, but you, you do things better when you feel better about yourself. And so those are kind of some of the collateral that's come from building a brand and having the mission that we have, I don't think I realized the difference it was going to make for Darcy when I was trying so hard to make a difference for the other women in the world. So I'm over here a little emotional because our journeys are so many parallels. I just, so many of what you're saying, I feel so deeply because I've been on a similar journey. When I tried out for this reality show, it was set up like American Idol. And so the first round of it was here in Phoenix and I got my golden ticket, just like American Idol. And I remember calling my daughter and talking to her. She was one of the first people I called. And it's like, the message mattered today. Today, someone heard this message and it mattered. And it is so much, like I said, we are so alignment of who are you and love that person because they deserve to be loved and cherished and cared for. And like you, I didn't always do a good job of that for my my children. And I'm seeing, unfortunately, unfortunately, yes, what that equals as they get older. And I told her, I said, I have not always done right by you, but I know I can change and I can help other people not make the same mistakes I made. Yes. Like she needed to know that I saw my, my weakness and that I wasn't going to stay in it. Well, and when you learn to give yourself that grace and that compassion, you're more, you give more grace and compassion to others. Like, I think I've come to recognize that so often the judgment that I'm putting on people around me is like the judgment that I'm putting through my, my own internal battle inside. And so when you learn how to let that go and to give yourself grace, you're just you're just happier. You're kinder. You, like you said, you can do better. You can do better by your daughters. You can do better by your mom when you've allowed yourself that grace. And, and I think a lot of times our best friend, if she called us and said, I'm feeling this, I'm feeling down on myself. We'd be like, what? You're like the most amazing person I know. Like, are you kidding? Look at, you're doing this and you're doing this and you're killing it here. And you've got this going for you. And we would give her like the best pet talk in the world. But when we do it to ourselves, we're like, yeah, and yesterday you did this Mm -hmm. and you should have done this and man, you didn't work out today. And what did you just eat? Like we just like pounded on ourselves and it's something we would never do to our best friend or our mom. We're doing it to ourselves, And the loudest voice we hear every day is our own. That broken record of thoughts and we believe it. It's internal. And so you can break that record and change those thought patterns and 
I love Mel Robbins. She's one of my faves too. And the high five habit, like mm-hmm. I actually love like that whole process of giving yourself a high five. And I feel like that's kind of just right in line with what we're challenging our customers to do with your makeup bag, pull out my wonder lip gloss. And I'm like, oh, I'm wonderful. Like I really am wonderful, you know? And it's not a way to like put yourself above someone, but it's a way to give more to yourself so that you can give more to others. Yes. So here's, this is crazy. I woke up uh, two nights ago in the middle of the night with my mind just racing. I'm giving a keynote in a few weeks and my mind was racing on this conversation, what the women needed. And after that whole mind scramble, because that's yes. how it goes in the middle of the night, I had this thought of why I had this attitude, this thought of sometimes before I learn to really love and accept who I am and flaws and all love this human, just love them and have compassion. Before I learned that, I remember a lot of times I would go and serve people in different capacities, whether like you said, as a mom, so many, so many opportunities to give yourself away. <laughs> yes. But you know, whether it was making things for the soccer team or being on the PTA or a nonprofit, whatever it was, sometimes I would serve and even serve to people who had a lot less than me. And I would almost get bitter. I'd be like, I give all this to you, but no one cares about me. Yes. To the point where actually at my one of my jobs, one of the employees said that to me. She just goes around all day wringing us all out and helping us get dry again after we've just been soaking wet. Just, but no one's here to bring out Bridget. Like it was that obvious. But yes. Well, I'm thinking it. People are seeing it. And I, I was thinking that. This happens to women all the time. We go and serve. And then afterwards, like, man, wish somebody actually loved me like this. I wish someone yeah. actually cared about me. But here's the deal. We put out all sorts of hormones and pheromones and all the things. And when you talk negatively to yourself, when you don't love who you are, they're not going to give it back. Yep. They're never going to give it back. Oh, true. There's, and, and even if they do, it will never be enough. Yes. Right? Because your yes. bank account is already so deficit. You're in the red so bad that no matter how much they do give you, you're still not going to be there yeah. to accept it. Yeah. yeah. Have you ever yeah. done? I'm sure people know people like that where you serve them and they're like, well, thanks, but I wish the meal was actually hot. Yeah. What is this? Right? You're like, yeah. Yeah. rude. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> Do you know how hard I worked for this? <laughs> but that's, yeah. because that, that's a deficit of self. I love how you said that. that. And so until you decide to turn it on in the mirror and say, I am worth it. I am worth loving. I always, I always joke, talk sweet to yourself. Hey, sweetie, how you doing today? You know, just be goofy with it. And yes. when you do that, not only do literally scientifically your chemicals change, but people see it and gravitate towards it. And then all the things that you were begging for naturally come to you. Exactly. Well, you teach people how to treat you. That's the reality of life. And so if you are, if you're already treating yourself one way, how do you teach people to treat you better? It's just not going to happen. I think that's something else. I, I love my forties. Like I'm going to be really sad. I only have a couple of years left in them, but it's been the best decade of my life. And it is truthfully all this thought process of how I talk to myself, but then also teaching people how to treat me. Like I am the queen of sorry. I will tell you, sorry, if I take you to lunch, you don't like your food. I blame it on my, right? Like I'm like, oh, it's my, it's my fault that you don't like what you chose. I'm the queen of that. And I've had to reteach myself that's not something that I need to apologize for. Like, that's not my fault. That's not my fault. And I actually am not responsible for everyone's joy. And definitely, if I don't feel my own joy, I can't build for theirs. It's just not going to happen. So that's like something else I've recognized a lot in my life is one, I need to learn how to treat myself so that then I can teach people how to treat me and the respect that I deserve. And And it's really funny because when you start loving yourself more, people around you love you better. Mm -hmm. In that process, like my husband and I have a better relationship today than we've ever had. And I owe that. I really, I know, like, I know I keep coming back. I'm like a broken record right now, but I owe a lot of that to me learning how to love myself and then teaching him how to love me better. He already loved me, but now he knows how I need, how I need him to love me. Because I'm, I'm showing him how I'm doing that to myself too. So, and, and part of what gave you the understanding of how to teach him was now you know how you exactly. need Because I know what I need. Like we, you know what you need. It's so much easier to ask that of the people around you than just like 
I am the queen of under my breath being like, well, it'd be nice if you would have done that. Or I, did you not notice the trash was overflowing? Instead of like just saying, I need help. <laughs> Today, I really could use, use you doing this, this, and this. And then that communication, it, it just betters your life. Yes. So, yes. I have loved this conversation. I'm so, so glad that you came on here. I know that you, we have a discount code for Shine Cosmetics, yes. right? Do you want to tell us about that? Yes. So visit our site, shinecosmetics.com. You can enter the coupon code strong and capable and receive 20% off your purchase. And we would love to have you come engage with us on our social media email. If there's a way that we can lift you and help you feel better about you, we're here for it. Yep. I love it. I, I, I don't think there was a better conversation to kick off this season than this one. Thank you so, so much, Darcy, for coming on. Thank you. And it's lifted me too. So I appreciate the opportunity to have sat and chat with you today. 